In a graph, there are two points A and B. Let's say you want to get from point A to point B. There are obviously many ways to do this, but which way is the quickest? Meet the Dijkstra algorithm. In this video, we're not only going to be talking about the Dijkstra algorithm, but also about Euler tours. Before those two, we need to know the basic structure of a graph. Let's start by constructing a graph. So the points or dots on the graph are called vertexes or nodes. The lines connecting two vertexes are called edges. The oval you're seeing here is basically an edge, but instead of connecting two vertexes, it connects one vertex and goes back to itself. These are called loops. It's like a circle round back to the same point. Another thing that's important is the degree of a vertex, which is the number of edges connected to it. In this example here, the vertex on the left has a degree of three because three edges are connected to it. And the other vertexes have a degree of one. Euler tour, what is it? It's a trail around the graph in which you end back at the start position after going through every edge but you're not allowed to go through the same edge twice. Let's take this square as an example here. The Euler tour of this square looks like this. As you can see, we're back at the start. We went through every edge without repeating an edge two times. Let's try adding a line through the middle like this. Now you try to find the Euler tour. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I just can't seem to find the Euler tour here. But don't worry, because in some figures, it is actually not possible. And that is because of one simple reason. Let's say that this is a part of a graph. Now this vertex has a degree of 3. We go through the edge on the left, and we come out of this vertex with the edge on the right. But as you can see, one edge is remaining. Since we have to go through every edge in an Euler tour, we go through the one in the middle. But we also have to end off on our start point. But the problem is, to go from this vertex to the start point, we have to use one of these edges, which we've already gone through. In an Euler graph, we can go through the same edge twice. It's not possible to have an Euler tour in a graph where the degree of any vertex is an odd number. If it were an even number, we could have gone back using the remaining edge. Now that we know when an Euler tour is possible, how do we find them? Let's take a look at this graph. First, make sure the degrees of all the vertexes are even numbers. Step two is to divide the graph into smaller graphs. In this example, I'm choosing to divide it in this red graph and that green graph. Now that we have divided the big graph into two smaller graphs, our primary goal should be to go through these two graphs separately with one rule. Let me explain this rule in practice. We start at the start vertex, that's usually given. Let's just say that it's this vertex up there. Since we are on the red graph, we go through every edge on this red graph until we meet a point which is connected to another graph. If we haven't been on the other graph, which is the green graph in this case, we switch over to the green graph and continue on the green graph and go through every edge there. Okay, here, for example, let's go through like this. Okay, we are on this point now, and this point is connected to the green graph, so we switch over. We go through every edge possible. Okay, now we're back at a point which touches the red graph. Should I switch over? No, because we've already been on that graph before. Only switch over if you haven't been on that graph. So continue through the last edge. Now we're done with the green graph. Let's just finish up the red graph. And we're done. That's the Euler tour. Let's do one more example. As you can see, I've already split this graph into three smaller ones. You can split the graph into as many smaller graphs as you want. It's important to split it in a way such that the process is as easy as possible. So the degree of all the vertexes here are even. So let's start up here and let's go down like this. Now we're touching the green graph. So we switch over to the green graph. 
go like this, like this. Okay, now we're on the yellow graph. So since we haven't been on the yellow graph before too, we switch on the yellow graph. Okay, now at this point, we're touching the red graph. But we've, we have already been on the red graph. So we don't have to switch over. Now let's come back on the green graph. And let's finish the last part up. Exactly. Now that's the Euler tour. Finally, the Dijkstra algorithm. The easiest way to understand this is through an example. We need a graph and let's name every vertex. Here, every edge has a value too. This value most likely represents the time it takes to go from one point to the other. For example here, going from point A to point B takes 12 minutes or maybe 12 seconds. We want to get from point A to point G. Which path takes the least amount of time? Firstly, the start point always has a value of zero. From here, we have to see all the possible paths we can take to the next point. We can go from A to B or from A to D. The value of the line AB is 12 and the value of the line AD is four. So let's do the following calculation. We add the value of the lines we are going on to the value of the point we are on. Since the point we are on has the value of zero, this is the result. Zero plus 12 equals to 12 and zero plus four equals to four. But now we only have to take the smallest result, which is four. And that means the value of D is four. Let's do the same process again, but from point D and from point A. So we can either go from point A to B, from point D to B, from point D to F, or from point D to E. What's important here is to not forget the point A to B, because we have to pretend we are on point D and on point A. The goal is to give a value to every vertex like this. Since the value of the point D is four, these are the respective calculations. 12 because of the line A to B. Everywhere it says four plus is from point D, since the value of D is four. And the smallest value that comes out of all of these is when we go from point D to point B, which is four plus five equals to nine. Now B gets the value nine since we ended off there. We have to keep repeating this until we get to point G, our destination. Now let's talk about what this value of this vertex even is. This value is the value of the shortest paths from A to this point. There are obviously many lines we can take to get from A to G, but this value, 26, is the addition of the lines in the shortest path. Once you have the value of the shortest path, it is much easier to find this way. You can work your way backwards from G with the values until you reach A. And it turns out here, this is how the path looks like. And thank you very much for watching this video. This is where I'd like to end off. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to write them down in the comments. See you in the next video.